I'm better than the average youth pastor. Welcome back to No Pro Worship. My name is David Wesley. This is actually episode number 13 in this weekly video series, and it has been my absolute pleasure to walk through some principles, strategies, tips, and tricks for helping develop in your worship ministry. I hope that throughout all these videos, you've seen my heart for worship and my heart for small church musicians and singers. I love the fact that all you want to do is give your best to God and lead your people well when you gather together for worship. I believe strongly, and I've said it from the beginning, that I believe God's people deserve leaders that grow. And this video series is my way of contributing to that. So thank you very much for that opportunity. So today's video is an introduction to a little mini series that I wanna do on the guitar and how it can be used effectively in a small church worship team. So my relationship with the guitar began around 2013 or so. And when I first picked up the guitar to learn it, it wasn't because I wanted to play it in front of people. It was because I wanted to understand the instrument and how I could lead guitar players more effectively. When I led worship, it was primarily with the piano. So with that goal in mind, I kind of approached the learning of the guitar a little bit differently. And I really wanted to focus on the, the strengths and the weaknesses of the guitar so that I knew what I could expect from my guitar players and what just might be completely unrealistic. And you know, looking back 15 years later, um, some of the expectations I had of guitar players before I really learned the instrument myself were pretty unreasonable. So if people ask me, you know, so how good are you at guitar or whatever, my joke is kind of, I'm better than the average youth pastor. Um, I should be a lot better than I am, uh, you know, 15 years on, but like I said, my goal was not to be a virtuoso performer, but to be able to lead guitar players well. So here we go. So this particular guitar I've had since about 2005. It is an electric acoustic. So I have an active pickup here where I can put in a battery and I have some controls for the tone of the guitar and um, just plug into the end there. I've used this guitar on a number of videos on YouTube and uh, generally you'll actually see uh, an external mic. That works better in recording to get a really sweet tone out of this guitar. But then when you're on a loud stage, um, putting a microphone in front of an acoustic guitar doesn't work out terribly well. So the guitar is quite a versatile instrument. It can't do everything, especially in the hands of an amateur musician, but it can do a lot of things. Um, primarily, it can be used to provide some harmonic context for a melody. And uh, when you're strumming a guitar, it can provide a little bit of the pulse. To help give you your count in the song. The guitar has a number of textures, including things like palm muting. And different techniques that can be used to provide a little bit of percussive elements that you can't really get out of a piano very well. Um, there's also finger picking, which I won't demonstrate because I'm not very good, but this is a way to provide a little bit of texture, especially when it's used with other instruments, whether it's um, in the background of a scripture reading or, or a prayer, it can be quite beautiful. Now, some of the downsides of the guitar is that it doesn't have the same kind of sustain like you would on a piano with a damper pedal, especially an electronic one. So if I let this chord ring an E chord, the open strings will keep going, but if I take my fingers off, it's only the, the three strings I didn't have my fingers on that keep going. So there are some it can sound a little bit uh, choppy, especially with some difficult chord changes. Now, one thing that is quite different between the guitar and the piano is that there's actually only a certain number of keys that especially the amateur guitar player can play in. And those keys are C, D, E, G, and A. And any other uh, key that you need to play in, you can use a capo to go up one semitone so you can get to your F and your B flat and those other chords. And the other thing that's different about playing a guitar versus a piano is that in each of those keys, the, the shapes of the chords that you do with your fingers are quite distinct. And the result of that is that you actually get a very different sound depending on the key that that you're playing in. So a key like E 
has a lot of open strings. And the key of G has fewer open strings, but uh, a lot of the strings will, um, your fingers don't move a whole lot. So there's very smooth transitions between them. And um, some key, some chords in, in certain keys you can't do without doing a bar chord, where you have to lay your finger across the, the whole fret there. And bar chords are the bane of beginning guitar players. And when you practice as seldomly as I do, they're difficult because your finger muscles get weaker, weaker and you don't have the calluses on your, on your hand to, uh, to give you the strength to do them properly. So many guitar players will try to play in keys that avoid bar chords, which is a totally fair thing to do. But we can all grow in some areas and bar chords is definitely an area of growth for me. So I came to understand that a bit because certain songs were written by guitar players on guitars and the, the key that the songs were written in have a, can have a big effect on, on sort of the, the shape of the song. And if you move the song into a different key, you can actually lose a lot of the feel. For example, Open the Eyes of My Heart was written um, in the key of E. <laughs> So you, you have that really open sound, So, but if you wanted to drop that song down to a lower key like D, you're going to lose a lot of that power. Um, so there are those considerations that you don't really have to think about with piano. One of the other downsides um, with a guitar is that uh, if you're not playing regularly, you'll lose the calluses on your fingers, and it is very difficult to play for an extended period of time without the, the thickening of the skin there. And uh, I found that I can't play guitar after I've given my kids a bath, after I've done the dishes, just because my fingers get softened up and it's just absolutely torture. But it is a, a great instrument. And when it's used in the context of the band and you accentuate its strengths and uh, try to make up for its weaknesses, um, it's a great instrument to have. It's quite versatile. So in the next couple of weeks, I actually wanna go through um, those fundamental keys that the guitar is playing through and just talk about uh, the shapes of the chords and some of the, the difficulties that you can have and some of the strengths of certain chord shapes because um, as I mentioned in past videos there's often many keys that you can do a song in and when you're playing the guitar you can choose to do that song in a, a number of different chord shapes depending on where you're going to put your capo on the neck of the guitar. So thank you for bearing with me for this introduction to guitar by a non-guitar player. Um, you can check back every Friday for new videos. Like I said, I believe that the church deserves leaders that grow, and this, and this is my way of helping to contribute that. And these videos are made possible by my patrons on Patreon. If you want to support this ministry, you can visit patreon.com slash davidwesley. And I will see you next Friday.